Hello folks, welcome back to Ben in Berlin. Today we're going to explore somewhere that's purposely insignificant. We've just made our way from the Holocaust Memorial, and apologies for the sound coming from the building work there. And we're going to head to a site just down this side street over here, and it's a car park. And it's the site of the Führer's Bunker. So today we're going to run through why this site is purposely insignificant, why it wasn't published as a location for such a long period of time, how um, the Second World War really came to an end on this site, because this is the location where Adolf Hitler did kill himself, and not long after that event, the Second World War came to an end. So folks, this is the site of um, the Führer's Bunker. There is no access to it today, only a small part of it to the lower bunker uh, remains deep underground. And the reason why it's a car park is on purpose. As I mentioned, they wanted to make this site purposely insignificant because they were terrified that if they were to keep this place open in some shape or form, it could become a shrine for Nazis and indeed for modern day neo-Nazis as well. So around 1936-1937, in the Third Reich Chancery, which would have been just over here, right now we're in the gardens of, um, of that uh, residency of Hitler, it's where he, he used to live and uh, uses his office space, um, they had a bunker built in, uh, in the gardens. And around 1940, uh, so quite early on in the Second World War, uh, Hitler asked his main architect Albert Speer to construct um, an even greater bunker because they were worried that um, uh, they would lose the airspace battle above Berlin. And around 1942, 1943, this um, construction was finished. It was pretty um, indestructible. Its walls were 3.5 meters thick, we believe, and the ceiling between 3.5 and 4 meters thick. And it was about 15 meters below the ground where we are right now. So on the 16th of January 1945, Adolf Hitler made uh, the Führer's bunker his main um, residency. So went down into the bunker and that's where he spent the last few months of his life. On the 20th of March 1945, he made his last public appearance. Um, he came out into the gardens of the Third Reich Chancery up from the bunker and gave out uh, medals. That footage uh, is on film. And he wasn't handing out medals to um, uh, what we, you would think of a soldier, an adult male, uh, usually. Uh, it was children who had fought um, during the Second World War. About a month later, on the 20th of April, uh, he celebrates his 56th birthday down here in the bunker alongside around 36 of his support staff uh, and also Josef Goebbels, the propaganda minister, his wife and their children were also here as well as Eva Braun, his mistress, and Blondie, his dog. It's actually around that time the Soviet artillery was in ra within range of Berlin. They could, uh, they could attack the suburbs by this point. 29th of April, he married Eva Braun. Um, his description of it, we believe, was that it was a, a well done for serving him, because this is the site where Hitler and Eva Braun killed themselves. Hitler said to his um, doctor, what's the quickest way I could kill myself? And his doctor gave him cyanide capsules. Now Hitler was terrified around this point because obviously he was losing the Second World War, but also Mussolini had just been um, killed and um, they had publicly showed his body. And Hitler was terrified that Stalin and his Soviet troops would get, would get hold of his body and do things to it. And so um, he gave his cyanide, one of his cyanide capsules to his dog, Blondie. His dog then died. And the reason for this was that Hitler was worried that these would be duds or fakes and that he would wake up in Moscow with Stalin bearing over him. Uh, Eva Braun took her capsule. She then died. And then Hitler bit down on his cyanide capsule and at the same time shot himself in the head. He was dead. 
He gave his troops orders to dispose of the bodies, to burn them. So they took the bodies wrapped in blankets out into where we are now, the gardens of the Third Reich Chancery, or would have been the Third Reich Chancery. And they, there was a crater in the earth where a shell had landed and they placed the bodies inside and um, his driver had brought gasoline from the farer's bunker, the driver's bunker, which wasn't too far away. And SS troops poured gasoline over the bodies and set them on fire. The Soviet artillery by this point was coming down quite heavily. So they, the, the SS staff went back inside the bunker. A few hours later, they sent out some SS officers to check on the body and they reported that the bodies were still being burnt and that they added more um, gasoline to, uh, to the fire. And then a few more hours after that, another officer went out and confirmed the bodies had been um, burnt completely and they had buried them over with, uh, with soil. Now, one of the main reasons why you have the conspiracy theories that argue that, um, that Hitler uh, didn't die and perhaps went to South America and lived out the rest of his life sipping pina coladas or whatever it is the conspiracy theories uh, say. The Soviet forces didn't announce until 1968 that they had uh, the charred remains of, of Hitler's body. They had found uh, where the, the, the troops had very quickly buried these uh, still um, uh, very charred burnt remains, but still bodies, uh, because they were terrified when they were trying to bury these bodies because the bombs were literally falling upon them. And so what they did was they uh, used the dental records um, to actually confirm that this was indeed Hitler's body and Eva Braun's body as well. But because they didn't tell anyone for quite some time, there was always these rumours, still today, that, uh, that it wasn't Hitler's body they had found. Um, but from what we know, um, the, a person who worked in the dental surgery from memory drew um, Hitler's dental records and so they compared like for like. And there's been similar tests since. There's a whole other story about how Hitler's body was moved around secret locations um, from 1945 and onwards for quite some time. Um, but we're 100% sure that it was Hitler's body and he did indeed die at this site. So what was the, um, the bunker like? Well, it was a large site. And in a moment, I'll show you an information board which has some pictures of the, the floor plan. It was a top bunker, the original that was built, and then the deeper bunker, which became the Führer's bunker and Hitler's main residency uh, from around mid-January until his death in 1945. It was damp, it was overcrowded, it was oppressive. Uh, most of the furniture had come from the Third Reich Transfer and been moved in there. There was a U-boat diesel engine to power the electricity and the air conditioning as well. So we're now walking over the site of where the, the bunker would have been. And when the Soviets got here in 1945, they, um, they looted it as they did the Third Reich Chancery. And then they decided to try and destroy these sites. So Third Reich Chancery was above ground, so quite easy to get rid of. But of course, the bunker was designed to um, withstand explosions. And so, you know, they tried to put explosives down there and, and demolish the the bunker but this is a very strong structure reinforced concrete very thick walls very um very thick ceiling and so when they tried to do this the it was it withstood the um the the explosions and so they decided to cover it over so the last we saw of of the bunker was the late 1950s around 1959 and that's when they covered it over and this area was very close to um, what was to become the Berlin Wall just a few years after. Uh, but it was the site of the divide between East and West here. This was the Soviet sector. And so they covered it up and they thought, what's the most boring thing we can think of to make sure this site doesn't become this, um, this place of worship, this shrine for people to come to? And they decided a car park was <laughs> the best thing to put here. Around the 1980s, they added these uh, prefabricated apartments here. And it was when they were digging up um, the, the earth to make the foundations for these buildings, they um, re-uncovered, re-found um, the bunker. And there was a photographer called Robert Conrad, and he actually disguised himself as a construction worker and was able to access um, the bunker and took some incredible photographs of what uh, it looked like when these people moved into these apartments in um, the late 80s, early 90s, they may have not known uh, in great detail what this site had been. And that's all on purpose. They wanted to make sure that it was purposely insignificant. 
around 2006, they added a small information sign, which is just, uh, just here. And that explained what this site was. Again, the reason why this was so um, recent as such is they wanted to ensure, again, that it didn't become a place where people would, would come for the wrong reasons. So there's actually this area just here where the crater was, where they discovered the bodies of, um, of Hitler and Eva Braun. And behind me, you can just make out the sign that was added, as I say, just in 2006. And that was all on purpose. They wanted to make sure that it was an unpublished site for such a long period of time. There is debate in, um, in the modern world about whether they should do more here and have more information with the idea being that it's important to not forget of the horrors. Um, but Berlin is, is pretty much an expert in understanding and recognizing um, and having a recognition of its past. And this seems the most apt um, solution, if you like, for this particular site, because there is a growth of, um, of, of far-right ideals, certainly in, in many European countries. And so this works well because it's not necessarily difficult to find, um, but when you do find it, all you will come across is um, a car park, this small information sign, and then groups of tour, um, groups, of tour groups stood around here um, learning more about the Nazi party, the Second World War, and how it all came to an end pretty much on this site.